know your IS code provisions short lecture series. So in this short lecture, I'm going to explain clause number 7.3, that is design imposed loads for earthquake force calculation. So first of all, what is imposed load or live load? So imposed load is that load which uh, is due to the occupancy of a building. Which is, which is due to occupancy of the building. Now, it is said that only a percentage of live load is considered while doing earthquake analysis. Sometimes uh, like a zero live load is considered on the roof or terrace of the building. So why uh, such things? Why there is a need for reduction of the live load? So let me give you one example. So let's take ordinary residential building. So on slab, when we compute, Say when we calculate, we calculate the dead load, that is the sulfate of the uh, slab itself, sulfate, and then live load. Say, uh, like for ordinary residential building, it is two kilonewton per meter square. Okay. So that's how we do gravity load analysis. Now, when it comes to lateral load analysis, so now the contributors for this live load. So, what are the contributors for this live load? Furniture in the building or in all the rooms and uh, load of people. So we can assume that furniture in the building is something like a semi-permanent kind of thing. So that is there and sometimes we move and sometimes they are there in the room itself. But when it comes to people, when it comes to people, so while designing the uh, slab of any room, all the load, total live load is considered, total live load is considered. But when we compute say lateral force, it is uh, very easy to assume or it is very prudent to assume that all the people will not be present in all the rooms when earthquake occurs. So that means what the total live load is like semi, uh, some percentage of live load is there in rooms and some percentage that is because of the movement of people. So that is their distributor. So that means there is reduced live load. So this live load is uh, use that is a percentage of live load is used for the computation of earthquake lateral force. Now, when it comes to live load on the roof, so it is less likely that when earthquake occurs, people are on the terrace of the building. So these are the things which I will explain in this uh, short lecture that is design imposed loads for uh, earthquake force computation. So let me share my screen. So let's uh, start with how much live load to be considered. So first, let me start with the load combinations. So load combination case one, there are four cases. So case one, uh, 1.5 times dead load plus 1.5 times live load. So here in this load combination, when we say live load, it is total live load. So there is no reduction, it is total live load. And then case number two, that is 0.9 times dead load plus 1.5 times earthquake load. So here there is no dead load, sorry, no live load. And case number three also, there is no live load. That is 1.5 times dead load plus 1.5 times uh, earthquake load. So these are load factors, 1.5. Then here also there's no live load. When it comes to case number four, so 1.2 times dead load plus 1.2 times uh, uh, live load plus 1.2 times earthquake load. Here, live load is, Full live load, please observe this one. Here live load is full live load. Now where we are using say uh, some percentage of live load, that is while computing say earthquake load, we use full dead load plus percentage, appropriate percentage of live load in the computation of earthquake load. So how it is considered? Let's take the equation for base shear calculation. So base shear is equal to acceleration coefficient that is AH, multiplied by seismic weight of the building. Then the equation for acceleration coefficient is that Z by two, SA by G and R by I. So R is response reduction factor, I is the importance factor, Z is zone factor and SA by G is the uh, like acceleration value, SA by G value. 
corresponding to the natural period of the building. Now, how this W is uh, computed? So let's take an example of three-story uh, building. So where uh, weight of the first floor is W1, weight of the second floor is W2, weight of the third floor is W3. So all put together, that is W1 plus W2 plus W3 is total weight of the building. So something like this, you can see in the diagram, first floor weight, second floor weight, third floor weight. Then let's look at how the weight of uh, first floor is computed. Weight of the first floor is computed using this equation. You can see W1 is equal to weight of slab. So that means what is the dead load? Weight of slab, that means volume into density. That is weight of slab, uh, first floor slab. Weight of all the beams in the first floor and half of the weight of columns in first floor plus half of the weight of columns in second floor. This is total uh, like 50% uh, of first floor and second floor columns put together. Then similarly, half of the weight of wall of the first floor plus half of the weight of wall in the second floor plus some, redu plus some, uh, some reduction due to openings in the walls that also need to be considered. Plus you can see weight of the permanent elements. So the, the, uh, the elements are the items which are permanent in nature. That weight has to be computed uh, exactly. And the last item you can see here, <clears throat> percentage of live load or appropriate percentage of live load. So this will, ex will I will explain in detail. And also how to compute the seismic weight of the building is discussed in, in detail in another short lecture. You may view that. Then the next one is Q. So that means what after computing W1, similarly W2 and W3, that is weight of the top floor. So while computing weight of the top floor, we need not consider any percentage of live load. So that means what live load uh, percentage is zero. So I'll discuss this in detail, okay. So W1 plus W2 plus W3 is equal to total seismic weight. The total seismic weight multiplied by acceleration coefficient is equal to base shear. Now this base shear is distributed over the height using this uh, parabolic equation, okay. Now this Q is earthquake load at that ith level. So first floor EL1, second floor EL2, third floor EL3. So that is earthquake load. Now let's look at this first floor slab. So here on the slab, 1.2 times dead load plus 1.2 times live load. This live load is full live load. So this is like a gravity load acting 100% and plus in addition to that, some load factor is there. Now how, uh, EL is used. So here EL is earthquake load is the lateral force. Now we can check here in the computation of earthquake force, we have used a percentage of live load. So the details of which are given in this clause, how much to be used are given in the clause 7.3. So let's go into those details. So design imposed loads. Clause number 7.3.1, for various loading clauses, classes specified in IS 875 part two, which is uh, imposed loads, okay? Design seismic force shall be estimated using full dead load plus percentage of imposed load as given in table 10. So what table 10 says, if imposed load is up to three kilonewton per meter square, including three kilonewton, then we need to consider 25% of live load only. And if it is above three kilonewton per meter square, we need to consider 50% uh, of live load for the computation of uh, uh, earthquake force. So the same shall be used in three-dimensional analysis of the building also. So that means what for equivalent static analysis, uh, for, uh, for cal calculation of seismic weight uh, in 2D analysis as, as well as 3D analysis, we use this table, this is for appropriate percentage of live load for computation of earthquake force. Then for the calculation of design seismic force of buildings, imposed load on roof need not be considered. So why it, it need not be considered? Because say there is less likelihood that when earthquake occurs, people are there on the terrace or uh, live load is there on the terrace. However, the weights of equipment and other permanently fixed facilities should be considered. That means what, say there may be a uh, water tank, 
or there may be some uh, say uh, generator structure okay so that kind of thing which are permanent on the roof so that should be considered so in such a case the reduction of imposed loads mentioned in table number 10 are not applicable to that part of the load so that means weight of the water tank has to be considered fully and weight of uh, say any equipment which is installed there has to be uh, considered fully and weight of say people th that is not required to be considered uh, on the roof then Imposed load values indicated in table 10 for calculating design earthquake lateral force are applicable. They are, these are applicable for normal conditions. But when loads during earthquakes are more accurately assessed, so that means sometimes designers, uh, designers say uh, compute these forces, the, the loads arising due to live load, they, they are computed accurately. So in such case, this table number 10 need not be used. But what code says is, this table number 10 values have to be minimum values. The table number 10 with actual assessed load values subject to the values given in table seven as minimum values. So this value should be minimum where imposed loads, load is not assessed as per 7.3.1 and 7.3.2. So only that part of imposed load which possesses mass shall be considered. Okay, imposed load which has mass to be considered. So that, then that means what that much imposed load, which is uh, responsible for say uh, seismic waste shear. And also the lateral earthquake design force shall not be calculated on contribution of impact effect of imposed load. So impact effect effects are not considered. So that means it's assumed that these live loads are not creating uh, impacts. Then, Clause number 7.3.4, loads other than those given in uh, the table shall be considered appropriately. So what are those loads? Say example, snow load or the load arising due to other permanent equipment. So that is the region of severe snow loads and sandstorms exceeding intensity of 1.5 kilonewton per meter square. So if it is say less than 1.5 kilonewton per uh, meter square, Oh, sorry, if it is say uh, exceeding 1.5 kilonewton per meter square, then 20% of the uniform uh, snow load uh, to be considered. Okay, so respectively shall be included in the estimation of seismic weight. Let's go through this clause once again. In regions of severe snow loads and sandstorms exceeding 1.5 kilonewton per meter square, 20% of uniform design snow load or sand, sand load respectively, that means both, shall be included in estimation of seismic weight. That means because of sand and because of snow also, both have to be included in the uh, seismic weight calculation. Then in case of minimum values of seismic weight corresponding to these load effects given in 875 are higher, then higher load values are, uh, shall be considered. So that means what, if the this uh, like 20% is uh, say uh, lower and the values given in 875 are higher then higher values are considered. Then the last one is 7.3.6. In buildings that have interior partitions, the weight of these partitions on floors shall be included in the estimation of seismic weight. This value shall not be less than 0.5 kilonewton per meter square. So that means what? Uh, compute the weight of the partition and distribute over the uh, like floor area. If it is more than 0.5 kilonewton per meter square, consider that value. If it is less than 0.5 kilonewton per meter square, then consider 0.5 kilonewton per meter square value. So that's what code is suggesting. So in case the minimum values of the seismic weights corresponding to partition given in 875 are higher, then higher value shall be, con uh, shall be used. That's what I said. Okay. It shall be ensured that the weight of this partition shall be considered only in estimation of inertial effects of the building. Okay, so that means for computation of lateral forces, earthquake lateral forces. So this short lecture is intended for helping students and practicing engineers to understand IS code provisions in a better manner. And the following references uh, uh, have been used in preparing this lecture. And I sincerely acknowledge the help of my research students in preparing this lecture. So thank you.